Hey guys, Raven Self here. Welcome back to another episode of Corpse Party Book of Shadows. Last time we left off, Sayaka started her radio show. And now we are Naho. <laughs> Let's keep this going. Sayaka's on air personality was incredible. She was absolutely listening. I was absolutely listening to a pro at work, and she had me hooked from the moment the show began. Okay, that wraps up the intro. Miss Sayanoki, please head into the booth. I have no idea what that was. On my way. It was my turn now as guest speaker when I entered the recording booth. Sayaka sat facing her mic and waved me over. Hey, a girlfriend. I returned Sayana Sayaka's cheery smile and sat myself in front of the guest mic that had been prepared for me, but something felt wrong. Wrong. Very, very wrong. Ah! Mm -hmm. What's the matter? Oh, it's nothing. Just felt dizzy for a second. Well, the camera's on you now, so wear your cutest face, okay? Roger that. This child was the daughter mentioned in my research on the Shinazaki family. This was Sachiko. She was the one who attached herself to me. Her eyes were black and hollow, with no discernible pupils at all. She sat utterly motionless, motionless, but I knew she was watching me, waiting, biding her time. My hair stood on end, blood rushed to my head, and bile surged in my throat. The Shinazaki curse was far too powerful. I couldn't suppress it. It was clear Sayaka couldn't see her. This was bad. I had to be careful not to let Sachiko interfere with the recording equipment. Okay, we're back, starting with the listener mail. All right, folks, it's the moment you've all been waiting for. The topic of this week's Try to Do the Thing workshop is... Ugh, can I go home now, please? <laughs> what do you mean, no? Come on, be a sport. <laughs> Guess there's nothing I can do about it. This week's topic is, that's right, try to tell a scary story. Yikes. Man, I told you all I didn't want to do this one. So why did you guys send in so many responses? We actually received a record amount. Far too many to tackle by myself. So I've invited guests to help me out. <laughs> hey, hey, don't really applause yet. I haven't even said who it is or who has every... Or has everyone already guessed? Because it's totally who you think it is. The pro with the know-how. Spirit investigator. Extraordinaire. As beautiful as she is brainy, it's high school paranormalist Naho, Naho Sanoki. Give it up for Naho! Good evening. Thanks so much for coming. No, thank you. It's an honor to have been invited. Oh, how about that, everyone? So mellow, so modest. Isn't she just the bee's knees? Who says that anymore? Naho and I actually go to the same school. We're even in the same class. Isn't that right? <laughs> we hang out a lot, in fact. Some of you clearly knew that and have been outright demanding that Naho make a guest appearance for quite some time now. Oh, excuse me. Well, your wish is my command. My pleasure, in fact. I think I may even be more thrilled to have her here than you guys. Anyway, given today's theme, Anaho seemed the perfect guest, so I cared so care to get us started with some choice words for any evil spirits that might be listening. Tremble on the border between this life and the next, under my seven stars. That's what I'm talking about. Those ghosts have got to be shivering in their ethereal booties after hearing something like that. So let's get right to the listener letters, shall we? Here's a scary story from one Junpei Nagi of M City in Tokyo. In my experience, adverse spiritual manifestations from my research had always been easy enough to keep at bay with my powers. Whew, a second. This one is different. For this energy to be completely visible on broad daylight, I'd never seen anything like it. Oh, it's bad. My head is splitting. But the camera was but the cameras were rolling, so to speak, so I had to at least keep myself from coughing up blood again. Naho is grabbing her skirt tightly with both hands, muscles completely rigid. My my, was she actually getting nervous? How unlike her. I kind of grinned internally a bit at the sight of Naho acting all girly and scared. It was adorable. Ador bubble. It was adorable, as I like to say. But I still had a show to host. Thunk. 
I slid open the door, and there before me I saw a pair of eyes staring intently right into my soul. Wow, that is so super freaky. How bad at Naho? This one has this has got to be fake, right? Mr. Mizuno of Kyoto is just pulling our leg, right? He may be. But with only this evidence to go on, it's hard to judge the authenticity of the claim. So what you're saying is, it might actually be real. Oh, That is a possibility, yes. Oh no, please. Actually, I've noticed something even more frightening than since this segment began. Naho, your focus keeps drifting over the corner of the booth. Oh, uh, well... Don't tell me. There's someone there, isn't there? There's somebody there, is there? Oh, I'm getting chills. Do we have another guest with us today? An uninvited one? Please say no. No, 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 we're fine. This seemed a perfect twist to, to up the tension of the segment, but the look on the host's face suggested I may have been onto something, which was terrifying. Her guest spot on the show may have just been fun and games, and now Naho, well, was well-versed, but I knew Naho was well-versed in spiritual matters. So is she actually sent something? I'd never really taken this ghost stuff too seriously before, but it might have just been because I didn't understand it. It was like a whole new world. Unbeknownst to me, the time was coming when I'd finally start to treat it with the caution and respect it deserved, but by then it would be too late. Great work, everyone. That's a wrap. The recording ended without incident, as far as anybody knew. Or, as far as anybody knew. Sayaka tossed a piece of chocolate in her mouth that she seemed to have brought with her. She was as casual and relaxed as can be. So, out with it. Did you see something in the booth or not? No, I didn't see anything. I glanced back into the recording booth. Such a ghost spirit had disappeared a little while ago. I felt it was best to act as if nothing had happened and successfully managed to steer the topic of conversation elsewhere. Until... <laughs> What the? Hmm? What's wrong? Was someone talking out there during the recording? No way. Who would a? Uh... No way would any of us make a rookie mistake like that. You wouldn't be able to hear us from inside the booth anyway. There's something on the tape though. It sounds like a voice to me. Huh? Where? Here during the exchange. This exchange. Mr. Mizuno of Kyoto is just pulling her leg, right? He may be, but the only but the only the only the only if only sevens go on. I'm hearing those two. Those two. You don't hear a third voice. I'm not hearing anything. Mr. Mizuno of Kyoto is just pulling her leg, right? He may be, but with only this evidence to go on. Right here, where Miss Sanoki says he may be. Mr. Mizuno is pulling our leg, right? He may be, but with only this evidence to go on. He may be, with only this pulling our leg, right? He may be, but with only this evidence to go on. Oh god, there is a voice. It's saying, I'm watching you, right? I right, I'm asking for voice. He may be. Okay. Unfortunately, with the voices turned up, I don't hear that. Oh, God. Whoa. You've got to be kidding me. It's in the recording for sure. Let me turn that down now. Duh. That's so creepy. Is this for real? An actual EVP? Gah! Hey, what's going on? G uh, hey, what's the matter? Pull yourself together! Ah! Suddenly, the director began to clutch at his throat and thrash about. His face was bright red and his mouth frozzed over his struggle to, as he struggled to breathe. Gah! Hold him down! He's gonna knock everything over and hurt himself! Yes, sir! Gah! Is, is it over? What was that? Some kind of seizure? No oh, crap, he's not breathing. What? God! Call an ambulance, quickly! He needs CPR! Okay. 
Come on, keep it together, man. The hell's going on? Send the guest home, we're done. Sayaka's usual smiling countenance been replaced by a thin mouth and cold sweat. There is no doubt about it. This was the influence of that spirit. This sort of thing must be a huge shock for someone who's never been con had contact with the spirit world before. I regretted appearing on the program at all. Yo. I'm so sorry. I guess I shouldn't have come. Oh, don't be s Don't be silly. You did great. They managed to resuscitate this director, too, at the hospital. Okay, those car noises are really loud. They can just cut out the voice for the broadcast, but honestly, I say we leave it. I mean, it's kind of a lucky break when you think about it. <laughs> I'm really grateful for your help today. I owe you one, so if there's anything I can do for you, just let me know. Oh, and as for the Kifanon, key key how's next weekend sound? <laughs> on, the way, on the way home, Naho finally smiled. Glad to see she still had it in her. I needed to put on a happy face myself, too. I was afraid I seemed too gloomy. It would bring Naho down, and she hadn't done anything wrong. I had to let her know how grateful I was and try to bring her spirits back up. The two of us parted ways on a corner near our houses, so I needed to stop in at a as I needed to stop in at a, con a convenience store for some groceries. See you later. Thanks again. You too. Good night. I'd never before felt such a strong, persistent spirit. I never before felt such a strong, persistent spiritual presence. I had a considerable amount of power. Turn that out. Within me, and usually it was more than enough to disperse any malicious wills that dared draw near. But even with all my concentration, I'd still put Sayaka and her co workers in grave danger. They easily could have been killed by the curse. For the sake of dear Kibiki's safety, we really should have put the kibosh. the kibosh on our entire investigation until the Shinazaki family line a lot sooner. I, I guess I don't know what that word means. But it wasn't too late to call it off. As far as I knew, I was going to pull out from Heavenly Host Elementary case altogether. I'd made up my mind. I should probably undergo a spiritual, a traditional spirit exorcism as soon as possible. Mm hmm. Hmm. It was past nine thirty, so it had been dark out for hours already. Yet there wasn't a single light on in Kibiki's house. Kibiki. No signs of life. Somehow the whole house felt larger and emptier than ever before. Kibiki? Kibiki, are you sleeping? I peeked into his study, but he wasn't there, nor was he anywhere else. The house was deserted. Now Kibiki's meetings for work were always held at irregular times, so this wasn't unprecedented or anything. But the atmosphere inside just felt different, somehow. There was this peculiar silence. As if no one had ever lived here in the first place. I'm watching you. Something just seemed very, very wrong. It was like someone was watching me, sneering at me. <gasps> Finally, I found a note on my desk. Not the one I'd left for Kibiki this morning, but a response written in his familiar scrawl. Dear Naho, thank you for your concern. I couldn't live with myself if I exposed you to any more danger on my behalf, however. Taguchi and I have gone to Heavenly Host Elementary. We've noted the way back, so please don't worry. We'll return safe and sound. And if we're successful, let's all go out for a nice meal together, okay? Uh, no. <sighs> With a sigh and a mumble, I snapped back to reality. Glancing at the clock, I marveled at the fact that it was already past ten. I'd been in a daze for a half an hour, ever since getting home. Craziness. Ugh, what a day. My shoulders feel like they've got lead weights on them. I couldn't have brought it back with me, right? No, there was no way. I stood up for my death. The problem was the uniform. I couldn't really relax in it. I should know better. I just need to change. Yeah, that sounds good. If I feel awful better once I get out of this uniform. I can see you. <gasps> God, please. This isn't Seiko. 
I just went southern for a second. Is somebody there? Please no. I was glad no one was had seen me talking to thin air like that. There was nobody else here, of course. Nothing to be afraid of. It's just my imagination. I really, really need to get out of this uniform, so once again I started changing when. Definitely not my imagination this time. There was somebody screaming outside my window, running toward my house. What? I seriously felt like I was going to break down. Maybe I already had. Opening the curtains slowly, I appeared outside to see who it was. Wait, is that Naho? I couldn't see her face clearly, being on the second floor and all, but that was Naho, all right. She was crying like a mad woman. She looked awful. Sayaka! What's wrong, Naho? Not now? Sayaka, it's Kibiki. Kibiki's crossed over. Okay, just calm down, Naho. Tell me what happened. Where is Mr. Kibiki? I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. It's all my fault if Kibiki were to die in there. This was the first time I'd ever seen her so incoherent. I spoke slowly and gently, trying to my best to calm her down. Naho, please, just tell me what happened. Let me help you. Start at the beginning. I, uh... I want you to come back with me right now. What? Please, I'm begging you. Tears were streaming down her face. This was a sight of Naho I never even imagined could exist. There had to be a reason she was so desperate. I agreed to follow her back to Kibiki's house, if only out of concern for her well-being. Sajiko ever after. Those who perform this ritual can cross over to Heavenly Host Elementary, a cursed school sealed outside our world, outside time and space. It's a locus of... Locus? Is that right? I think that's the right term, maybe. Of spirit, a powerful energy, and the effect it had on me thus far has been disturbing enough that I have decided to abandon my dis... I've decided to abandon my investigation. One second, I need to drink. But before I could convey that to Kibiki, he crossed over without me, taking only Taguchi for backup. So please, Sayaka, you're my only hope at this point. Will you come with me to Heavenly Host so I can rescue Kibiki? I didn't really get any of what she was saying. Heavenly Host Elementary? A cursed school? And this was all to rescue Kibiki. What was in there exactly that he needed rescuing from? The one thing I did understand was that I'd been accompanying Naho to some unsafe. I was I I I'd be accompanying Naho to some unsafe, unfamiliar spirit world. I couldn't just casually agree to go with her. So this place I'd be going with you is dangerous. Then I scare her easily, you know. Please, I can't perform this ritual by myself. You're the only person I can count on, and I swear I'll protect you no matter what. Her face was the most disheveled I'd ever seen it, and she was practically begging. I knew two sides of, to this girl, her cool and collected professional persona, and her cat to her my master, but this panic desperation fit neither of them. The words I'd spoken to her following our recording session suddenly popped into my head. I owe you one, so if there's anything I can do for you, just let me know. Kibiki. Kibiki. I took one more look at Naho's tear-stained face and just knew I couldn't turn her away from the turn away from her in this time of need. Naho, do you really promise to protect me? Uh-huh. A ray of hope lit up Naho's face like a flower in bloom, and I knew I'd made the right decision. Alright then, I'm in. What are friends for after all? Sayaka. Thank you, Sayaka. I just wouldn't bear to see her cry like that. As cute as her uh, a face as cute as hers deserved to wear a smile at all times. We'll be out for a while though, right? You mind if I run back home first and take care of some things before we go? Okay, I'll be waiting for you here, butt naked. Not a good idea. You'll catch your death of cold. Anyway, I'll be right back. Well, as long as Kibiki's over there, the larger... Then sample si oh, the larger than the larger the sample size for his research, the better. This is for you, ma'am. The Shinazaki estate. We don't need that place anymore. If he's going to leave me here to spread this curse for him, then fine. That's just what I'll do. 
No hesitation, no backing down. All right, she posted it up on her blog and that's where the whole, yeah. Let's see, in this world, there's nothing worse than parting ways with a dear friend. Some may say it's sweet sorrow. Oh, she forgot the subject line, Sachiko and the after wait, no. How about Sachiko ever after? Perfect. You're hoping for lots of hits? <laughs> Mom, I'm heading out. Not wanting to worry her, I told her a little white lie, suggesting that I had another recording session tonight. I'd been going to late your sessions practically every night for a while now, so it seemed the perfect excuse, and sure enough, she bought it. You certainly are a hard worker, Sayaka. Just make sure you keep your energy up out there. Don't get so busy you let your blood sugar drop. Here. Kitty! She handed, me a, she handed me a small piece of emergency chocolate. This was like a tradition with her. She'd always given me one when, give me one when I left to show her support. And it always reminded me that I was loved. This one in particular was bringing tears to my eyes. I must have been more scared than I thought. I'll be home as soon as I can. Thanks. Knock him dead, sweetie. Sachiko, we beg of you. Sachiko, we beg of you. You said it twice, right? In your head? Yep. Okay, then it's time to pull this thing apart. Make sure you use your nails and don't let go. Got it. One, two, three. <gasps> Something impossible is happening. We perform the ritual just as Nahos instructed, and then the floor just split open and swallowed us whole. Was this a dream? Was I hallucinating? I sure felt real, though. It felt like I was being dragged to hell. My vision quickly went bright, and my consciousness seemed to fade to black. And then... <coughs> I felt dust and sand filling my mouth, and I sprang to my feet, choking. <coughs> what is this? Where am I? Naho? I was in a cold, dark room. It was damp and clammy and felt very much like a cave. Was this the Heavenly Host Elementary School Naho was telling me about? Naho? Naho? Racked with apprehension, I tried raising my voice, but barely had one to raise. I looked around, but didn't see Naho anywhere, and there was no response. God, this can't be real, can it? I wanted to go home to forget this place existed, but then I realized I'd never asked Naho how to get Cross back over. Without her, I was stuck here. <sighs> so that was my top priority then. I absolutely had to find Naho. <sighs> Kids, before you get sucked into a hellish, otherworldly place filled with ghost children that want to kill you, ask the person you're going with how to get out of there. Or maybe just not go at all. I'm sure she hadn't accounted for the possibility that we'd wind up in different spots once we got here. But as long as I could track her down soon, I knew everything would work out. I stepped forward slowly and carefully and took a closer look at my surroundings. Oh, excuse me. <sighs> okay, I think we're gonna we're gonna call this episode here. That seems like a good place to stop. Um, oh, I'm getting tired. Anyways, um, yes, yeah, so for next time we'll see uh, what awaits us. We actually get to play the game as the game was intended instead of just being a visual novel. <laughs> okay, um, anyways, like, favorite, comment, subscribe if you enjoyed, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye! One o'clock already? Well, I've got an appointment I can't miss, I'm afraid. I guess I'll see you after school for recording. It's at 5.30 on in East Shinjuku, so we should probably meet at 4 behind the school gate. Okay, you said behind the gate? Really? What are you, 5? No, oh, it's cold as a cucumber, just like always. Today's recording was sure to be a blast. This one's persistence, I'll give her that. <coughs> Blood, really? 
Is this curse honestly affecting me all the way down to the cellular level? <coughs> Seriously, how long are you planning on haunting me? <laughs> 